Income tax 2023-2024. Who qualifies as your dependent? Get ready and some coffee because we're laying down the facts about income tax preparation 2023-2024. Most of this information can be found in the line instructions section of the tax form 1040 instructions tax year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. We're now isolating and thinking about dependents whenever we think about a change in one particular item with regards to taxes we want to visualize the primary line items that might be impacted for the income tax equation and then think about what those changes to those line items will do as it ripples through the rest of the income tax formula so for example if we have a change in a dependent it could have an impact on the filing status which could have an impact on the standard deduction. This will not always be the case, but sometimes could be the case. For example, if we have a single filer who then has a dependent, that possibly could push them from a single filing status to a head of household status, in which case you can have a change to the standard deduction as we've seen in prior presentations. However, if that individual was already in a head of household status and got another dependent, it may not have that same impact for the standard deduction because there may not be a change in that case to a filing status based on the dependents. Now, the tax rates, similar kind of thing here. If there was a change to filing status, primarily because of a change to dependents, such as going from single to head of household, you could have a change in the tax rates, which are the tables, in essence, that will be applied to the taxable income. So then we have the tax credits that could be impacted. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. This is the first thing that should kind of come to mind when we think about dependents, because usually we think about dependents as children is the first type of dependent that often comes to mind. And then you could have, say, a child tax credit uh, related uh, to that dependent. Now, if they're not a child, then you still might be able to get a a credit related to the dependent. And we'll talk about that further shortly. And then you also could have a credit for a refundable credit because primarily when we're thinking about that child tax credit, there could be a refundable portion of the child tax credit. So a lot of line items can be affected uh, when we think about the dependent or change in the dependents. If we look at the first page of the form 1040, the dependents will typically be down here and we'll have the name of the dependent, the social security number, which is quite important because the IRS wants to make sure, given the fact that there's such a tax benefit to dependents typically, that two people are not kind of trying to claim the same dependent, which is often something we have to be careful of in a in when there's joint custody type of situations. Now on the tax returns in the credits section, the tax calculation could be impacted. The child tax credit is the main credit that probably comes to mind. All right, so who qualifies as your dependent then? Dependents qualifying child for child tax credit and credit for other dependents. Let's take a look at a worksheet actually going to uh, the form 1040 instructions here. Here we are in the Form 1040 Instructions, page number 17, noting that like with the filing statuses we talked about in a prior presentation, it's usually fairly easy to determine whether or not someone is going to be qualifying as a dependent of a taxpayer. However, like with the filing statuses we talked about before, sometimes there's gray area as to whether someone's going to qualify as a dependent, sometimes for similar reasons as we saw with the filing status type of situation. So in other words, 
if we're looking at a taxpayer and asking if someone qualifies as their dependent, if the dependent is a child of the taxpayer, it's generally going to be a fairly straightforward question. However, sometimes you have like custody issues, for example, and you have to determine if that child is going to be qualifying for one taxpayer or the other taxpayer. That's one section of gray area that could cause us problems. You have a similar kind of scenario that we saw with the filing statuses when we're thinking about someone being either single of, or head of household, for example, oftentimes the dependent being a determining factor of that. And then you could also have questions as to whether someone is going to be qualifying as a qualifying child versus an other dependent. Some of those are some of the common gray areas uh, that come up. Okay, so the general thought process here is going to be if they qualify as a dependent, first, do they qualify as a qualifying child who could possibly qualify for the child tax credit? The credits being the primary tax benefit of the dependencies. We noted there could be a change to filing status as well, going from single to head of household. But the first thing that comes to mind is the credits. The biggest credit would be the child tax credit. That's the first question we're going to go through. If they do not qualify for the child tax credit, then we try to default to see whether they qualify for the other dependent credit. That's going to be the setup or layout of the questionnaire. The questionnaire being a great tool because it'll help you to first kind of drill down on, on those gray area type questions uh, where, where it's not really easy to determine if someone qualifies as a dependent and possibly give you an idea of the areas where you can do further research from there. All right. Who qualifies as your dependent? Dependents, qualifying child for child tax credit and credit for other dependents. Follow the steps below to find out if a person qualifies as your dependent and to find out if your dependent qualifies you to take the child tax credit or credit for other dependents. The credits, of course, being the primary benefit of the dependents from a tax perspective. If you have more than four dependents, check the box under dependents on page four of Form 1040 or Form 1040 SR and include a statement showing the information required in columns one through four. In other words, there's four line items for four dependents on page one of the Form 1040. If you have more than four, you're going to need another form to list all of the dependents and give all the social security numbers. Tip, the dependents you claim are those you list by name and social security number in the dependents section on Form 1040 or 1040 SR. So obviously you have to have the social security number because given the fact that there's such a, a large tax implication with regards to dependents, the IRS has to be very strict and understand whether or not a dependent is being claimed twice, for example. Before you begin, see the definition of social security number later. So if you want to claim the child tax credit or the credit for other dependents, you and your spouse of filing jointly must have a social security number or ITIN issued on or before the due date of the 2023 return, including extension. So they have to be able to identify you with a number, which means you have to actually have you know, the number before the date of the return, including extension. However, if an I-10 is applied for on or before the due date of a 2023 return, including extension, so you're trying to get the number uh, and you've applied for it, and the IRS issues an I-10 as a result of the application, meaning maybe they issued it after the due date, but you applied for it before the due date, the IRS will consider the I-10 as issued on or before the due date of the return. Okay, let's get into it. Questionnaire, first question. We're trying to determine if it's a qualifying child. Why? Because we're looking at the most strict thing first in our questionnaire to see if they qualify for the largest benefit, biggest credit, child tax credit. And then if they don't, we're going to lessen the reins and look for the less strict categories for a qualifying other dependent, for example. So do you have a qualifying child? A qualifying child is a child who is, we have a relationship test in essence that we start with, son, daughter, stepchild, foster child, brother, sister, stepbrother, stepsister, half brother, half sister, or descendant of any of them, for example, grandchild, niece, or nephew. And, so we have an and, not an or, both conditions having to be met, was under age 19. This is going to be our age test. We have to kind of get an idea of the ages and the cutoffs of these ages and remember where these ages apply because sometimes there's going to be different ages depending on what we're looking at. So 
under age 19 at the end of 2023. So the end of tax year 2023 and younger than you or your spouse of filing jointly. Now, normally, if you're claiming them as a dependent, they're going to be younger than you. But you can imagine situations where that's not the case. So or under age 24 at the end of 2023, a student defined later and younger than you or your spouse of filing jointly. So they have to be 19 to be a qualifying child or 24. Even you're still claiming them as, as a dependent, as a qualifying child, possibly. But because they're like a student and therefore they're not earning their own money at that point, they're, they're a student. And so then we have the question of what does it mean to be a student in order to still qualify as a qualifying child on some taxpayer's tax return, oftentimes the parent's tax return in that case, right? Or any age and permanently or totally disabled. So age test under 19, unless qualifying as a student, therefore 24, if disabled though, no age test. And then and who didn't provide over half of their own support. So this is what's often called the support test. You're providing over half the support. Now, normally that's pretty straightforward if you're supporting them, but sometimes it might be a gray area, in which case it is, if it is, you can go to publication 501 to try to get down to the details of what it would mean to give over half the support. And who isn't filing a joint return? So we can call this the return test or were they married test, right? Because if they're married, you would think they would be filing their own return even if they would otherwise qualify. However, you have kind of an exception or is filing a joint return for 2023 only to claim a refund of withheld income tax or estimated tax paid. You can see publication 501 for more detail. In other words, they're married, but they're still basically a dependent and would not possibly be filing a tax return except for the fact that they had a job where they got W-2 income and the job withheld money from them for income taxes, even though they basically qualify as a dependent, and then they had to file a return to get a return of the withholdings from the W-2 income. All right, and who lived with you? So here's the lived with you test. Who lived with you for more than half of 2023? If the child didn't live with you for the required time, see exception to time. Again, usually something that's fairly straightforward. Did the child live with you? If, if the question, usually you say, yeah, they lived with you, but you might see, situations where it's like, well, they lived with us, but they were sick. So they were in the hospital for half the year. Well, does that still qualify? Because if they were home, they would have been living with us and so on and so forth. Those are basically in the exceptions. So there's, those are our tests. Caution, if the child meets the conditions to be a qualifying child of any other person, other than your spouse, if filing jointly for 2023, see qualifying child of more than one person. So in other words, you would expect that this set of questions would only be met by one person or the married couple, which is basically filing as one taxable entity. However, in a joint custody situation, which is a common kind of situation in a separation, right, where there's a split down the middle of the custody, you can imagine possibly having two people that could, that could claim this uh, series of questions, in which case you have a problem because you can't put the social security number of the same dependent on two tax returns given the significant tax implications and benefits of the dependent. So if you're in a separation type of situation, you really wanna think through the tax implications so that you don't get, you don't end up in this kind of messy situation of trying to beat the other person to file, to claim someone so that you can get the tax benefit before the other person does and then try to fight it out with the IRS and, and God forbid have to hire a lawyer which will just further the problems and then and then they'll get rich off it while you suffer and struggle to try to figure out what is going on. OK, anyways, number one, uh, do you have a child who meets the conditions to be your qualifying child? If yes, we go to step two. If no, we go to step four. So if yes, then we're going to we're going to go to step two here. We'll go straight through it. But if they didn't, you'd go to step four because you would imagine then they're not going to be qualifying as a qualifying child, but you still might try to get the dependent credit, which would be the less beneficial credit, but still beneficial, right? So let's go to step two. So is your qualifying child your dependent? Number one, was the child a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, U.S. resident alien, or resident of Canada or Mexico? See publication 519 for the definition of a U.S. national or U.S. resident alien. If the child was adopted, see exception to citizen test later. 
So if yes, we continue. If no, you can't claim this child as a dependent. Number two, was the child married? So if yes, you can see uh, you could see married person later. If no, we're going to continue. So again, typically you would think they would not be married if they're being claimed as a dependent, right? So if so, we would think it would be no usually. So are but there might be an exception, right? So are you filing a joint return for 2023? So if yes, you uh, can't. Are you filing a joint? If yes, you can claim this child as a dependent. Complete columns one through three of the dependents section on uh, page one of form 1040 or 1040 SR for the child. Then go to step three. If no, we can continue. So if they're a joint filer, it's pretty straightforward. But if no, we're going to say four. Uh, could you be claimed as a dependent on someone else's uh, 2023? tax return if the person who'd claim you on their 2023 tax return is not required to file and isn't filing a 2023 tax return or is filing a 2023 return only to claim a refund of withheld income tax or estimated tax paid check no see steps one two and four so if we say yes you can't claim any dependents you can complete the rest of the form 1040 if no you can claim this child as a dependent complete columns uh, one through three of the dependents and so on. All right, let's go to, to part three here. Does your qualifying child qualify uh, you for the child tax credit or credit for other dependents? So now we're looking at the credit itself. Number one, did the child have a social security number, an ITIN or an adoption taxpayer identification number? The, the IRS has to assign everyone a number or else they don't, you don't get nothing because the IRS needs your number now, man, your number. So it was issued on or before the due date of your tax return, including extensions. Answer yes, if you are applying for an I-10 or A-10 for the child on or before the due date of your return. If yes, we continue because you have to have the number. Uh, if no, you can't claim the child. Uh, so number two, so normally, obviously the social security number, if they're a citizen and whatnot, should be fairly straightforward. Not, but again, you could find those gray areas where it's a problem, right? Number two, was the child a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, or U.S. resident alien? You can see publication 519 for the definition of U.S. national or uh, U.S. resident alien. If the child was adopted, it's the exception to, to the citizen test. If yes, continue. If no, stop. Was the child under 17 at the end of 2023? So now we have a different, basically, age. You'll saw, you saw before that we were talking about 19 or 24. Now we're looking at uh, 17. If yes, continue. If no, uh, if uh, no, you can claim the credit for other dependents for this child. Uh, check the credit for other dependents uh, box in column four of the dependents section. So let's give a quick recap of the ages because this gets a little bit confusing, right? So we go up top and we said up top here, the question was, do you have a qualifying child? Uh, so that means the child is under 19 or if student under 24 or uh, any age and permanently or totally disabled. But to qualify for the credit for the child tax credit, as opposed to the other uh, other credit, the child tax credit be, being the more beneficial one, we have the age test of 17 was the child uh, age 17 at the end of 2023. Uh, if yes, continue. If no, you can claim the credit for other dependents, the much less credit right, for the child. Check the credit for other dependents box in column four of the dependents section on page one of form 1040 or, sec or uh, 1040 SR. Number four, uh, did this child have a social security number valid for employment issued before the due date of your of your 2023 return, including an extension? If yes, you can claim the child tax credit for this person. Check the child tax credit box, which is on the first page of the form 1040 in column four of the dependents section. If no, you can claim the credit for other dependents for this child. Check the credit for other dependents box. Okay. Then let's go to four. Now four, you'll recall up top, let's do this up top. We're gonna to say, we had the question, do you have a qualifying child? And then down here, we said, if yes, we go to two and we continue on to see if they would qualify for the child tax credit or other dependent 
if they're a qualifying child. If no, then they're not a qualifying child, and we're basically going to go to step four to determine if they could still be a, a dependent. So we have no chance at the child tax credit at this point, but possibly shooting for the other dependent credit. All right, step four. Is your qualifying relative your dependent? A qualifying relative is a person who is your son, daughter, stepchild, foster child, or descendant of any of them. For example, your grandchild or brother, sister, half brother, half sister, or a son or daughter of any of them. For example, your niece or nephew or father, mother, or an ancestor or sibling of either of them. For example, your grandmother, grandfather, aunt, uncle. That would be common for this other dependent area where now you you might be taking care of an elderly person, your mother, your father, your aunt, uh, uh, your, uh, your uncle, or stepchild, stepsister, stepfather, stepmother, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, father-in-law, mother-in-law, brother-in-law, or sister-in-law, or any other person other than your spouse who lived with you all year as a member of your household if your relationship didn't violate local law. If the person didn't live with you for the required time, see exception to time lived with you. Okay, and who wasn't qualifying child, uh, step one. So obviously if they were a qualifying child, we would have covered them above. And the fact that we're down here is because they weren't a qualifying child. For this purpose, a person isn't a taxpayer if the person, uh, what did I do? Was it for this purpose, a person isn't a taxpayer if the person isn't required to file a U.S. income tax return and either doesn't file such a return or files only to get a refund of withheld income tax or estimated tax paid and who had gross income of less than 4,700 in 2023. That's a fairly th low threshold of earnings. So that's often what's going to basically default people to not be uh, possibly claiming them had gross income. So if the person was permanently and totally disabled, see exception to gross income test later and for whom you provided over half the person's support. Now, obviously, if they only made 4,700, it's likely that someone's providing over half the support. So you would think these two would be somewhat related, possibly. So, but see children of divorced or separated uh, parents, multiple support agreements, and kidnapped ch child later. One, does any person meet the conditions of your qualifying relative? If yes, continue. If no, stop. Two, was your qualifying relative a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, U.S. resident alien or resident of Canada or Mexico and so on? If yes, we continue. If no, you can't claim. And continuing on, was your qualifying relative married? If yes, you can see the married person later. If no, continue. You would assume normally it would be no if they're qualifying as a dependent on your tax return. Number four, are you filing a joint return for 2023? If yes, you can claim the person and so on and so forth. If no, you continue. If it were no, we could continue and say five, could you be claimed as a dependent on someone else's return? Uh, if the person who could claim you on your 2023 tax return is not required to file and isn't filing a 2023 tax return or filing a 2023 return only to claim a refund of withheld income tax or estimated tax paid, check no, see steps one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay, step number five, we're almost there. Does your qualifying relative uh, qualify you for the credit for other dependents? So are they a qualifying relative? If they are, then the question is, do we get the credit related to them being a qualifying relative? Number one, did your qualifying relative have a social security number, an I-10 or an A-10 issued on or before the due date of your 2023 tax return, including extension? Answer yes, if you are applying for an I-10 or A-10 for the qualifying relative on or before the return due date. If yes, we continue. Number two, was your qualifying relative a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, a U.S. resident alien, see publication 519, and so on and so forth. If yes, you can claim the credit for other dependents for this dependent, check the credit for the other dependents, and so on and so forth. Now, we saw there's a lot of gray area in that questionnaire because you might be asking questions, well, what does it mean to provide half the support? Well, what if they lived with me, but then they had all this other thing where they went to camp or something and they were gone for six months for this reason or the other? Does I, do I still meet that test? What if I applied for the I-10 
uh, or or a social security number, but they wouldn't issue it because the because so on and so forth. Well, we can go into some of those questions with definitions that we'll talk about later. Uh, uh, but obviously, you can see the questionnaire can kind of help you to narrow down on where those questions might be. Now, again, usually it's fairly straightforward. Usually the tax software can really help you out as long as you use the proper dates, proper social security number, birth dates, I mean, as you enter the tax payers, as well as the, uh, as the uh, dependents and use the proper relationships, then the tax software can help you to kind of sort this stuff out. But when there's questions, you're gonna have to narrow down on where the question is and then do your research from there.